So yeah, I met Dr. Patel at the uh, A4M meeting um, back in May, and um, he's the author of the Glutathione Revolution, and of course, glutathione is a very, very important molecule, but definitely after reading his book was quite fascinated um, with uh, what he's put together. So Dr. Patel, why don't you tell us about yourself and, um, and uh, yeah, give us uh, an overview of everything. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Um, I'm a pharmacist. I've been uh, practicing pharmacy as a compound pharmacist for over 25 years now. Uh, I did my uh, I did my program over here at USC Southern uh, Southern California. So I've been grown homegrown over here for over 30 plus years now. So and I've spent almost last 22 years in just research and development of products, but more importantly clinical applications of this products that I do compound them. So I, I had a liberty of working on uh, early on, on glutathione when we first discovered the way to literally neutral, uh, stabilize it and deliver it through your skin, which is the first protein to deliver through your skin. And so when we did that part, I spent the last 13 years plus and just researching and clinical applications of various forms, various ways to deal with, 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 with issues and conditions. So, so I'm coming as a clinician, as a background, uh, and I'm more into practical uh, information rather than anything to do with didactic information. So, Excellent. And, and we all know that, you know, um, who, who was the one? Was it not Tom Levy, but someone on one of the webinars I listened to is, is, you know, in your car, we have combustion. We produce CO2 and water. In your mitochondria, we produce CO2, CO2 and water. The car produces heat, but the cells produce a, a waste product equivalent, oxidative stress, and that's where glutathione comes in. So it's, it's an extraordinarily important antioxidant. Just so you know, my, my uh, history on this, you know, I was always critical of supplemental antioxidants because we have an oxidative system for killing infection, but the glutathione is very much intracellular and, it, and it's very, it, we can call it the master, master antioxidant, but I prefer the term the specific intracellular antioxidant. A little, little longer definition, but I think um, it helps me rationalize that, you know, we, we need antioxidants that don't interfere with neutrophils, um, antibodies that, that produce um, produce oxidative substances for a purpose. Yeah, and absolutely, Dr. Dr. Lewis, and you just said it right correctly that the level of antioxidants in the intracellular level is so important uh, to restore that more than anything else that's from outside. So we take vitamin C and, and E's and CoQ10 and all those things, which is which is which doesn't actually get into the intracellular levels. And that's the key is how do we get to uh, improve the levels of glutathione intracellularly? And if we can do that effectively, we can still have the oxidative stress. The little stress is always good to your body, but too much is not good. So uh, we we can we can control that stress level uh, and have body functioning effectively at all times. Yes, and you know my, my mentor was an ophthalmologist at Harvard that uh, Louise and I were just talking about. She's the only other person I know in the, in the group that saw Dr. Trump as an ophthalmologist. He gave up traditional ophthalmology in 1980 and the next 40 years of his career mm -hmm. used the eye as a biomarker for systemic disease he developed treatments but he he started giving high dose vitamin e and some of his patients were saying they were seeing more gum bleeding so i think once again the dose makes the poison the dose makes the cure so we we and we also the location makes the the difference as well so i'm excited to hear what you have to to say do you have a slide deck or how are we going to um I do not have a slide deck. I was not prepared. I have no idea who the audience was either. So I was told at the Carter that, hey, come on down. I think you're going to you can like this group of people. They're going to have, they're educated. They understand what they're talking about. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, and so I, I was- We have a very of, smart group of, group of people. Yeah, you don't, you don't need a slide deck and just tell us what to do. We're, we're recording it with your permission and we'll allow our, our group to hear it in the future as well to capture your your intelligence on this so you absolutely you go at it the way you want so i'll i'll go over the science as well um, i'm assuming that uh, 
are 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 these all practitioners or are they practitioners and patients combined? Uh, combined. they're they're mainly mainly intelligent, well schooled lay people that are really oh. focused on health. And and so if they're still with us, Dr. Patel, they <laughs> you know they're they have a level of acumen because we don't um, we don't mince words. We get right to the science usually. So don't fear not. Perfect. I, I'll, I'll absolutely go to the science and I'll discuss everything I can do uh, while this is recording. So that way we want to make sure that anything that I say that is recorded, is going to be duplicated. And okay. whatever I don't want to say record on, on the recording, we can talk about it on off the balance too. So anyways, we can do both. So let me just go over the science of this whole thing first, because that's the most important part. Uh, as we all know, glutathione is a large molecule. It's a, it's a tripeptide, three amino acids, glutamine, glycine, cysteine. Um, and the key is how do you take those, uh, those, uh, th that protein molecule and get into the intracellular levels? And I always give an example of, of a baby that's in the womb. Uh, as soon as the baby is born, and I don't care, within five minutes, you cannot put the baby back in the womb again. Because as soon as the delivery, the baby comes out, everything contracts and there's no space to put the baby back in the womb. And the same thing with glutathione. Glutathione is produced intracellularly, but then once it's out available to the human body, it, it is generally not possible to put the glutathione back into intracellularly uh, with our technology that we have today. Uh, and so, again, I was not on the quest of doing that part by all means. I was, I was as a pharmacist, I was just looking at how can I stabilize glutathione outside the human cells? Because that was the most difficult thing for me to do is as a pharmacist is that, hey, can I have a stable molecule to work with? And so when we first started back in 2007, uh, our goal was to take the thiol group of, on glutathione, which is the sulfur odor that you, that, that, that you smell. Uh, I was supposed to put a, a chemical cap on it and, and by doing that, I can reduce the smell, but more importantly, I can actually protect it from getting oxidized in the water system. That was the goal I had. And so I was working with that goal in mind as a pharmacist, trying to figure out increased, increasing stability. What I did not know is that when I was using the polysaccharide molecules to do my job, it was actually physically twisting the protein molecule into like a small balls. And it was a mechanical process that was happening above and beyond just the chemical process that I was I, I was looking at. But so anyways, three, four years down the road, uh, 2010 comes, 2011 comes out, and I have this molecule that is actually sub nanotechnology of glutathione, uh, which is one, less than, I believe it's less than one nanometer, it's about nine, nine angstrom in size, that we were able to bring this molecule uh, in a stable form in my lab. Now, the, the bigger question is, what do we do from there? And so we started doing various forms. We put it into liquid, it tastes awful. I don't know if you've tasted glutathione, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't wish anybody would take that. Right. So that was an option. I was not a big keen on doing in, intravenous injections of glutathione because uh, we, we as a pharmacist were making intravenous form of glutathione. And we all know IV form of glutathione actually does not penetrate the red blood cells. It gets in your bloodstream. And when you, when you do the blood uh, uh, serum samples of glutathione, it shows up that there's a spike in the serum levels, but it only stays in the plasma it actually never enters the red blood cells. And so to me, that was, I said, oh my gosh, so what, why are we spending so much money, millions and millions of dollars a year on injecting patients with glutathione with the hope that it's going to give us some, some benefits, but all it did was uh, extended the half-life of glutathione inside your body for about 14 minutes, plus or minus nine minutes. So at the, at the best, you had five minutes of of, of activity, uh, and then the worst, you had 23 minutes of activity. And so uh, that wasn't the option for my patients. So I was not too keen on doing intravenous form of glutathione. Uh, and then it was one day in my lab, uh, by mistake, uh, somebody had uh, had a burns in the labs and they just put this glutathione on the skin and literally within seconds, the pain went away. That's the day glutathione was actually born with a delivery system in my lab that, hey, this thing goes topically. 
very next thing I do, I'm just telling you my story so that you understand yeah. where I'm coming from. Uh, the next thing I do is to, I picked up five five people in my pharmacy. I said, hey, I can't afford much, but I have I have Starbucks gift card. If I can poke you for four times and just measure the glutathione levels on you. And so I had five <laughs> volunteers in my pharmacy. It was cheap because uh, uh, Starbucks at that time was five bucks a coffee and it was five bucks of a lot of money 10, 10, 15 years ago. Anyways, long story short, what we found out was the glutathione was actually entering the red blood cells and we were able to improve the red blood cells levels of glutathione for up to four to six hours. And that to me was says, okay, now we have something to work on and now what, right? I look at the literature and I have, I can show you my literature deck over here. I have, I have every known book on glutathione in my, in, in, in my office right now. And I could not find any information that's going to help me support what I was going to, about to embark on, which is the clinical applications of actually improving glutathione intracellularly. Uh, and how do you do that? There's no dosing guidelines. All the dosing guidelines that are out there on the medical side is all about using 500 milligrams to up to three to four grams per day for, for Parkinson's patients and Alzheimer's patients. And so, uh, I, I wasn't sure what to what to dose it at. So one of the doctors I work with in Utah said that, you know what, let's let's do some trials. I'll start with 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams, 200, 400, 600, whatever you tell me. And, and we'll, we'll measure those levels out and see what comes out of it. And so what we found out was when you, when you actually improve the intracellular levels of glutathione, you do not need more than maybe 100, at the most 200 milligrams per dose to get you a peak plasma, a, a peak RBC levels of close to 1,000 millimoles per liter. And why and can, so, I, can I ask you why um why you're focusing on RBC, not you know like not in the mitochondria itself? So I do not have the technology to measure that part yet. So right now we uh, as as we speak today, uh, the, there's a clinical trial going on right now. Uh, we for the last two years, we had no IRB, IRBs were working at the university. So last year when they reconvened, they had literally had hundreds and hundreds of applications to be processed. And so we got our approval uh, earlier this year and the clinical trial has started. And, uh, and what we are doing, we are measuring those levels out right now. Uh, and so we will know more about it. And uh, to measure the mitochondria, I believe we had we might have do biopsies to do that part. And one of the doctors I work with in in Georgia is has offered us to do that with him. So we're working on that one as well next. So it, I, it's, I guess what I'm asking is that the 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 attachment to the red blood cells is what you think a decent surrogate for the intracellular. Um, it's better than what we have right now. Okay, um, no, that's it, that's a fine answer, right? I mean, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, because the thing is, if you do, if you do, there's the other forms of glutathione, like liposome forms of glutathione and oral capsules and and everything. Yeah, I'm not talking about NAC right now because NAC is the only way to also increase intracellular levels of glutathione. But besides NAC, all the other forms of glutathione actually doesn't enter the red blood cells at all. So there's number of trials done at this time. <laughs> Uh, the latest one was done in 2010 at the University of Texas, uh, and they took patients with liposomal form of glutathione, and they saw zero increase in the red blood cells. 100% of the increase was in the plasma levels, and uh, and the plasma levels of glutathione has a very, very short half-life. It's about 14 mm -hmm. minutes. So, so our interest was not to, you know, as a pharmacist, I was looking at pharmacokinetics. I said, hey, fine, I can give you some product. Now, how, how often do I give it to you? Once a day, once every seven days, once every 14 days, once every hour? What does that look like? And if the half-life is only 14 minutes, that means we know 14 times five is 70. In less than two hours, there's zero in your body at all. And so can we dose every two hours? Or re realistically, it's supposed to be every 20, 30 minutes. And so it's not practical. So our goal was to, literature does support that intracellular form of glutathione, which is the RBC levels of glutathione, has a half-life of about two to three days. 
in our study, we only found that the half, we only found that the peak plasma versus a trough was about four to six hours. And so, and that's after, that, that was after single dose application. And so what we are doing right now is we're doing multi-dose application to try to get some, some more answers from there right now. And hopefully the, pub, the, the results are coming out this, this month. And by the end of the year, we should have the article set up for publication. So we'll get more data, more concrete data from the university coming out. So, Beautiful. so anyways, so my job, I thought was done by discovering the product. And I said, hey, doctors, now you take charge of it. Ah. And of course, most of the doctors says, what do you do now? I said, well, I don't know. My, I was given the job to stabilize this molecule and deliver the uh, molecule to your body, which I did it. Uh, and I did not know that, I guess, most of the physicians were too busy trying to, trying to find out what to do with it. So I had to do my own work. So we started using on various different elements. And I, I'm going to go over every single thing that I've done. And if you read the book, all my stories are in the book. They're there. Uh, they should be able to. And the book that I wrote initially was all clinical book. And of course, my publisher came to me. I said, man, I cannot pay you for this book. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy it. I said, what do you mean? It's so much good information in here. I said, well, you're going to lose them in the first chapter because it's too much, too much clinical, too much uh, data in there. But not, it, yeah. yeah, it's not. And they have done that four times. <laughs> so I said, and, she, and I had no money to publish my own book. You know, come on. You know how, how hard is it to publish a book? So I said, what do you suggest? I said, I suggest you make it so that everybody can read it and, and read it correctly. So I said, I cannot do that part. So anyways, I had to have my professor, I called my professor at the USC, I said, can you please help me to do this thing and make it make it so that it becomes like a story format. And so she gave me some good ideas and, uh, and about a year and a half later, the book was ready. So uh, I'm glad that we were able to pivot that part. And if you read the book, it's all stories and it's all what we have learned over the years on different like type with type two diabetes or triglycerides or even simple as, alcohol detoxifications and reducing blood alcohol levels. Uh, and so the, the information is there. And if you're a physician, if anybody has a physician on, on this audience, in the back of the book, everything that I say has been referenced. So you can always go back and uh, can, can, can correct me if I, if I said something wrong. But so, uh, so make sure the reference is in the back to read this book. So I'm going to go over a few stories that I know of because they are very, very interesting. So let, let, let's talk about the first one. Uh, I had a patient up in Utah, a billionaire uh, that had, had post herpetic neuralgias and it was, it was wheelchair bound with no hope of ever walking again and, um, and literally suicidal, right? In his, he was in his late 70s, early 80s, suicidal because he has, he has all this money in the world, but he can't do anything. And so... Uh, early on, I saw that there was some research articles out there that uh, glutathione can literally help with uh, her, uh, with with uh, with the viruses, and so I said, you know what? I have no idea if it's going to help him or not. So one of the doctors in Utah I was working with told him that, hey, let's try this product out, and within 30 days, three zero, 30 days, he was walking with a cane for the very first time, uh, and so. I said, I think I said, what is this thing? How come so fast, right? And he has used glutathione products from the liposome forms for years and nothing had happened to it. And so all of a sudden he was, walk it was not, I mean, he cannot walk the full mile on his own, but he was able to get out of the wheelchairs and walk a few steps with a cane and not fall down. And so the proof was in the pudding when his attorney contacted me, tried to buy me out early on. I said, I don't even figure this portion out. And you it, this company is not even for sick because we, we don't even have a company yet. Uh, so that was the first case. Very next day, I started using patients with shingles. And when what, what happened was we were using patients with shingles. And, and you know, when you have ocular shingles or, or the shingles that the, that's, that's getting in the CNS type shingles, those are hard to treat. And they'll take anywhere from uh, two weeks to up to six months to, to get some relief out of it. And all those patients, they were using this glutathione product, and within 48 hours, we saw uh, we saw they were out of pain, 
and they were their were lesions were completely sealed up. It's like a sci-fi movie when you see that, hey, you you put something on it and the whole thing goes away. It's like an X-Men type product. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, this is crazy, <laughs> right? And so this was very, very early on. I'm talking about 2011, 2012. Uh, is what I first found out. Since then, I don't think so. My dad, who's 87 years old today, has ever taken a flu shot or uh, or, or any of the shots that shingles, none of the shots he has taken this uh, in, in his whole life. Uh, and unfortunately, he took the COVID shots last year because he couldn't travel without it. He's been traveling the whole world. Uh, and so uh, he couldn't travel without the shots. So he had to take the shots in. But uh, Every time people get a flu or a cold or whatever, it's 24 hours, it's gone. So that's what we have done on the viral side. Uh, the next case we had was a pharmacist out of Texas. Uh, he was researching and he, and we, we, were, we were both working on, we we're talking about this glutathione and he gets that, you know what? I've seen a research that it helps with triglyceride levels. I said, how? I said, I don't know. Uh, it just does. And so uh, this, the the other part of the molecule with the glutathione, the, the transfer system that we use is called cyclodextrins. And if you Google cyclodextrins, there are, I mean, there are a bunch of cyclodextrins that are out there. The most famous one is maltodextrins that you see in all your preserved foods. Anytime you buy any packaged goods, there's a, there's a, there's a, one of the ingredients is called maltodextrins. And that's just to preserve the smell. So when you open a packaged good, it doesn't, it doesn't smell so bad and you can, you're going to eat it. Uh, so different types of dextrins. The dextrins uh, early on, back in the 80s, they were used to see if they can help with cholesterol. So you know what? Glutathione help with triglyceride. This thing helps with cholesterol. You know, what the heck? Let's try it out. So we did about, over the one year, we did about 35 cases of patients with high triglycerides. And we, we picked patients with high triglycerides and uh, out of the 35, 33 of them had also had type 2 diabetes. So I, I want to report to you that literally in three months, the triglyceride levels, I don't care what the levels were, they could be 250, 300 plus, they were all under 150, under the normal range. But the better results was within five months, all those patients, every one of them's HbA1c dropped down to under 6.0. What do, you, what do you think nice. the mechanism is in that case? So there are there are two mechanisms that I that, that I thought of it. Uh, one was if, if you look at the literature of cyclodextrin, and, and I can send those literatures out to you, uh, is that cyclodextrin has been uh, it's like those like those scavenger like a claw. It just grabs on all those uh, so all kind of like a macrophage. <clears throat> I'm sorry, kind of a little bit like a macrophage or something. Kind of it. But it's a chemical macrophage, and it's not a cellular macrophage, and so it traps. It's like a filter. It just traps all this, uh, all these products, and it helps uh, get rid of it. That's the one that I thought was was the one happening. Uh, but the other mechanism that I thought would be is that the glutathione was just building up the better immune system and helping our own body able to pick those uh, molecules up and help it get rid of it through the liver. And so I still have not understood the complete mechanism of how That's everything hard. is working. But the fact that I get the results in three months or less, and again, I've tried, since then I've tried on hundreds and hundreds of patients uh, and I have yet to fail a case. The worst it took you know, was five months. And you know, the other thing is, you know, we live in such a toxic soup here on this earth and many people's glutathione levels really are supremely depleted. And, you know, I do a lot of micronutrient testing, you know, at the red blood cell and white blood cell level. And I would say a good number of those individuals, their glutathione levels are low. So I would say the majority of them. So, so obviously, glutathione having so many beneficial aspects in the body, including the detoxification the pathways that would, that would, you know, lend itself to having a whole lot of pathways that it's uh, improving. And, and I have not measured everybody's glutathione level, but the people that we have measured it, even if this normal, 
it's on the low end of the normal, like right. 500, 5, 5, 5, 525 millimoles per liter. And that's what we have found out. Yes. And again, I'm not sure who picked this ranges, by the way. You know, I do not know who picked this ranges. Is is no is 500 normal? Or do we need to have 900 normal? Uh, because, mm, right. you know, Dr. It, Patel, that's, a, that's such a good question because the, the flagship foundation of our program was to reevaluate all the physiological biomarkers that we think titrate well to chronic disease. And our markers, the ranges that we have established for normal are very different. They're all based on early mortality risk. And it's not going to be the same with glutathione, but, you know, you know, this morning I had a lady, uh, her B12 was high. Uh -huh. And the first thing I said is, who's says who? Lab <laughs> core? Where'd they get their number from? We have to question everything. It's mostly population-based in, in, in bio, uh, physiological labs. And I don't want to be compared to a sick person. Right. And, and that is so true because in medicine, that's all we do. We're comparing ourselves to other human beings that they are so-called normal. Uh, and who who gets to decide what's normal for us or not? So again, I'm not- Mortality, a, early mortality yeah. risk. That's That's reasonable. That's reasonable. And so it's well published. So we want to make sure that the glutathione levels for for anybody that's out there, I don't want to be on the bottom range. If I can get up to 800, 900,000, uh, and we all know it's 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 not going to stay in your body for more than a day or two at the most anyway. So no matter how much levels I get to you, you're just going to get 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 rid of it eventually. Uh, and so I'm not worried about having a high levels of glutathione temporarily if 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 it helps the cause that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, does the real life story today? My dad. I was talking about the story about my dad. He's 87 years old today. Uh, at the in the early uh, when he was in his mid forties, he developed type two diabetes. I'm not sure because of cholesterol or not, but only thing he was taking was the uh, garlic pills. I'm from Africa, so getting medications in Africa was really really difficult. So anybody came from UK or US used to bring medicines for my dad, and he used to take the keolic or the garlic pills every day. I remember that part because I was growing up and I saw that him doing that. Uh, but he had diabetes. Because of diabetes, he developed arthritis and blood pressure issues. So at the age of 87 today, he walks six miles per day. Mm. He is in his best health of his life. He has only spent three days in the hospital. And all those three days in the hospital, in the in 87 years, he has spent three days in the hospital. And all those three days were scheduled. One was for knee replacement and one was for scheduled stent uh, installed uh, in, in his arteries. But at the age of 87 today, he is no longer arthritis. He no longer is diabetic. He no longer has blood pressure issues. Wow. And, yeah. and he is the, between him and my, and my senior research scientist that, that works with me, they're the two people that have used the glutathione since day one of discovery. Because I, I needed some guinea pigs and what better than my dad, right? Uh, <laughs> I've done that with my mother, yeah. <laughs> um, so we use him on him and 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 i mean i had a dinner with him last night again and he, you know we, he was, we were just enjoying life and he was just enjoying talk and you know what he said because he's going to india in two weeks i said you know what dad you'll be back and he, he'll be there by himself for four months my mom passed away 23 wow. years ago so he's single he will be out there on his own starting a house and doing grocery shoppings and cooking and everything on, on his own, right? He doesn't like to eat out at all. So he'll do everything on his own and he'll come back. And you know what his regret is? Please make sure all my friends are still alive when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's, you know, at this age, it's so difficult because he lost two of his uh, best friends in the last three years. And he has about three or four more left right now. And his only regret is that I hope they they live with me as long as I'm going to live. Mm. And so <laughs> that's the only downside of the whole thing. So my so what he promised me is that please tell my story. Make sure that everybody's out there. If the loved ones there, they like with somebody, they're going to share this information. And so we can all live together for as long as we can healthy. Not yeah. in a nursing home. I don't want to be in a nursing home hell, uh, living my life, but I want to be at my home walking and, and traveling the world and enjoying life. Uh, and so that's absolutely. my story. So my dad, I was giving glutathione. So a few years 
to go, he was giving to his brother. And his brother is, is uh, my uncle is a type 2 diabetic. Uh, he lives in the Napa Valley. He loves his wine. Uh, he's a chef, so he likes to cook. Um, and and so anyway, so diabetes, you know, Indian community, we are the highest amount of diabetics in the world. So diabetic patient lost, he had gained like 40, 50 pounds, you know, just his A1C was 14.1. Mm. Okay. Three insulin shots, three different medications. I had, again, I had no idea. So I was giving my dad the products and my dad was giving them to his brother. And so every few days, I said, oh, I, I, I need more bottles. I need more bottles. I said, I think I gave it to him, but I, I, I keep on forgetting, right? So I keep on doing it to him. Nine months later, he comes to my house. And I saw him for the first time after nine months. And, and what I first thing I noticed was, oh, my God, he's like 40, 50 pounds lighter. I said, what the heck did you do? I said, you look so fantastic. Did you, did you stop drinking? And he goes, no. Uh, I said, is your diet getting better? I said, well, diet is better now. Uh, but he said he, his grin was from cheek to cheek. Couldn't tell, he could not contain, right? I said, so he pulled up his phone. I said, he goes to Kaiser. I said, hey, look at my Kaiser report. March. This was my A1C was 14.1. In September, A1C was 5.5. Wow. And, and I, said, I said, oh my God. I said, look, let me look at your medication list. And guess what? Only on two medication. And one, one of them was, was metformin. We'll help you get off the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. But the thing is, what the whole idea, in nine months, he lost the weight. He is, well, he's still diabetic, but He's well under control, 5.5. He does, he still drink wine at least, he says occasionally, but his occasions are every week, uh, uh, which is at least two, two, twice a week, he'll drink wine. And then he, when, he's, when he's catering for all the vineyards in the Napa Valley, uh, oh, yeah. he, he will go and have a glass with them every almost every other day, so to speak. So he's doing whatever he wants to do. He's lighter and is in the best shape of his life right now. Of course, granted, he's only 56 years old, uh, and so he was able to do that part. But it's the fact that he was able to get rid of it within nine months was the most astonishing part for me. Uh, yes. Other story I have was, I'll tell you one more story, because this, this was funny, because uh, not funny for me, but uh, uh, it, it was the, the mom that came to me with his autistic child, this child has not slept for seven years. Uh. Imagine the parents. Parents were just pulling their hair out. Seven years, and they barely slept maybe a couple of hours a night. And they would take turns, the mom and the dad would take turns. And the daughter has not slept for seven years. And so I told them, I told them about the glutathione. And of course, they didn't want to buy my product because it was too expensive. And I said, unfortunately, the it's not the process is so difficult that it's hard for me to make it. So it is it is expensive, right? And so so she bought the liposomal forms of glutathione over the counter. And so she used it for three, four months and she saw no changes. And, and then she forgot about it. Say, hey, this is not for my daughter. A year later, uh, now she's 70. Uh, now, when she came to me, it was already seven years. A year later, uh, she said that, hey, I tried the glutathione, but never worked. I said, no, you did not try the glutathione. I, I never saw you. I never, you never got it from me. Oh, I tried the liposomal form and it did not work. I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to gift it to you. Here, just take one bottle. Just try it. I, all I can do is try it. S literally 14 days later, I got this letter with teardrops on there. I said, I slept for six and a half hours for the first time. Wow. And the daughter, forget the forget the mom and the dad. They, they were selfish. They were worried about their life. The kid had an eye contact. The kid was already now communicating. I mean, that joy that came to the kid and to the parents was just, and I later I found out that these parents were millionaires. Wow. I said, and I go look at it. I said, oh my gosh, you know, they were looking at, instead of helping the daughter to the advice, I said, they, they thought they were too smart to understand, hey, glow are glow they'll just buy whatever. At that time, I was not convincing enough to tell people that, hey, this is the best form of glutathione. Maybe that was a reason. I don't know. But anyways, that was probably the, one of the best stories I had uh, in a long time to see somebody, uh, a child, which is, there's no placebo effect over there. A child just Absolutely. having all, just change in two weeks' time. So that's now, have, you gone, have. Have, you gone to, have you gone to Autism One to, you know, market your product? 
Not yet. Not yet. I again. Oh, you have to go to Autism One. Yeah. Um, yes. I have not been there yet. You know, so Dr. Carter, you know, I'm not a marketer, and I it's hard for me to do out marketing right now. It's like like next next week for uh oh, sorry this week for the very first time I'm going to this ozone conference. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me that you have to be at this conference because they need to learn about glutathione. No, so I'm going this weekend in Scottsdale for the first time, but I just started doing marketing for the very first time about two weeks ago. And uh, and I'm trying to go into the trade shows and talking to doctors and educating them right. about pros and cons and and for everybody we, we want to make sure that it, if they want to try this product that they try it but at the same time back of the mind they should know for any reason they don't like the product they don't like the smell the stickiness or did or did not work for you there's hundred percent money back guarantee because the last thing I want to do is is to sell a product and then it doesn't work for them so that's not the goal right. So we want to make sure that 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 is available. I believe somebody's asking, is there a group discount for this block of group? I don't know. How, I don't have one set up yet. I will set it up today and send it to Dr. Carter so that yeah, uh, I'm sure good. you can forward to your group today for discount yes. code uh, uh, to to help everybody out. Yes. So. Anyways, so I'm open for questions. I know it's 940 right now. So I'm open for questions. If anybody has any questions or whatnot, I mean, I'm mean more than happy to answer any questions. Okay, so I I usually dominate the questions because I'm <laughs> perfect that way. But I'll ask the first. The first one is, you know, the Roger Schwelt and others have been from MedCram. He's down in your neck of the woods. He's been promoting, you know, sunlight, particularly the red that hits on the cytochrome C oxidase. Red light is being really, is really important to, if nothing else, reduce the glutathione that's already intracellular. <laughs> um, any comment on the use of sunlight as a, or, or the whatever, whatever you know, hits the melatonin or uh, cytochrome C oxidase uh, absorption profile? In terms of being, you know, working together with what you're doing, because it sounds like you're enriching intracellular glutathione, but we still have to turn it back to the uh, electron uh, donating form to continue the electron transport chain. So, just your comments on that. Absolutely. So, first of all, this question came to me about a week ago from some of one of my patients as well. The same exact question, and I told the same answer to them. I am not too familiar with all the light therapy because I know there's blue lights and the red lights and all those light therapies. I've no, there's to- only there's only one light. It's called okay. sunlight. Sunlight. I know. I'm okay. trying to dispel all these notions about these fancy wavelengths. Okay. If one has a specific intensity, but we need them all because every molecule has different. I'm going to do a talk on this and I keep threatening a month or so, you know, Visible and UV light promote an electron. And if there's nothing to grab that electron in the excited state, it just drops down. But if there is, it's there to do work. Infrared just creates motion, vibration. Um, right. Microwaves okay. or lower energy just creates heat by creating rotational things. But there are so many different types of substances. We need all light. I'm not picking on you. I'm just doing this to, no. for educational purposes. But, you know, the... Um, you, you might want to watch the one light therapy, a little redundant, um, by, by Roger Schwelt on MedCram. And what he says is that 95% of our melatonin is not out of the pineal gland. It's intracellular. And we need to interact with sunlight to, and it, cause that's the only source of energy we really get to keep, you know, it's, it's like coolant in your, your car, you know, it, it, pulls the heat out of the engine, then cools in the radiator. And the radiator is glutathione and melatonin in it in their reduced form. So once they oxidize, we got to re- reduce them again. And that's what, um, that's what the, uh, the, the red light in particular does. So, so you're right about that one, right? So intercellularly, the GSH becomes GSSG molecule. Yeah. So GSH, it, it donates the electron. Uh, and the two GS molecules comes together, make GSSG molecule. The GSSG molecule can accept electrons from sunlight or from vitamin C that you take from outside sources. But sunlight is always better. Because right, it can be outside your- sources, yeah. And those GSSG molecules can become GSH again. 
glutathione is the only molecule, only antioxidant that has the redox properties that can keep on flip-flopping. And of course, it also takes from NAD to NADH to, to, to take the electrons from there. There's the electron so transport ways. chain. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So there's so many different ways to, to, to do that. Uh, but the key is, of course, uh, to understand that GSH and GSSG, the two uh, oxidizers and the reduced form of glutathione are always going to stay in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you keep on keep on changing that over. Behold, and, and healthy people, and healthy people, exactly. It's a healthy people. There are so many different products. I mean, the huge craze of taking NAD right now to do all kinds of diseases. Um, and as much as I, I'm working with NAD on trying to do to my own research, I'm finding out that you know what, the holy grail is still going back to glutathione, right? Because and, and so it's again, very simple, Doctor Patel. <laughs> If David Sinclair is is pushing it, it's probably a corrupted piece of data. Just, <laughs> just my humble opinion. <laughs> yeah, I was in I was I was in I was in Boston when they sold um, Sertris to GlaxoSmithKline for seven hundred and twenty eight million dollars, and then none of the Sertris scientists or the Glaxo scientists could reproduce that. So, you know, resveratrol <laughs> is not Ponce de Leon's uh, magic elixir. It's never one thing, you know? Yeah. Plus, keep in mind, resveratrol today, there is no pure form of resveratrol. Everything is tainted with uh, lots of heavy metals, everything. Mm. And so we we use resveratrol in one of my product for my skincare product. And we had to go through so many hoops to get the pure form of resveratrol. We still couldn't find it. So we end up doing it ourselves on, on killing heavy metals before we put it into, into our, our face cream products. Oh, wow. And so yeah. resveratrol is not a, there's no pure form of resveratrols in the world today, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, I've never taken it once I, once I saw the Glaxo results. It's like, eat food, right? I mean, there are cookie <laughs> supplements. <laughs> but uh, yes, I see if I, anybody I, else has questions out there. What would be the dose for children under 12? Now, Dr. Carter is going to chime in right now and say, before we start dosing children, we want to run and find out how full their bucket is, right, Michael? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But go ahead, yes. I can tell you the dose that I found out, so you have uh, some ideas. So uh, the dose I've done for the for the adults over the age of, I would say, 12, or even six, pretty much, but that's probably just about six, 12. It's about 100 milligrams uh, twice a day is what we found out. Is, is a good effective dose. Under the age of 12, you can go to 75 milligrams. Under the age of six, I've done as 50 milligrams. And I have given as, as early as a two month old child with just 25 milligrams every four hours. These are, that's a child, it was my, my, my wife's niece's daughter. She had the early on viral infections two and a half years ago. I'm not sure what virus was it but it was two and a half years ago it was it was a different virus but uh when she got that infection it was not flu and so we gave her the glutathione every four hours 25 milligrams and with, literally within two days the flu symptoms were gone she was breathing better everything came back to normal so so we have we have used glutathione on as as young as two month old and everybody about 87 years of age for sure we have used on patients with pregnancy. So if you look at glutathione on the on the on the FDA's website, it's already labeled as a grass status. Uh, but the grass is only given to a product if it's consumed orally. This is not an oral product. So the same status does not apply to my product, but uh, it just shows you that glutathione is is safe at at at, at uh, high concentrations. But but the glutathione product that, that we make. It is not safe at high concentration. And I'm telling you, repeat this again, it is not safe at high concentration is because the effects are so profound that your body can go into Herxheimer reactions and get a rash out of it if it's too strong, too fast for you. Mm -hmm. And so maintaining a good healthy dose is good. Just because more, just because little is good, more is not better. And I have a I have a lot of billionaires as my patients, a lot of them, right? And they said that, is it going to hurt me? I said, no, it's not going to hurt you. But why, why take more med? I said, use this as a medicine. 
Okay, don't see them as a supplement. Use it as a medicine. And your medicine, you only take what you need. You don't take anything more. And so all my patients goes, no, I can afford it. I'm going to take it. I said, be my <laughs> guest, right? It's not going to affect me at all, but uh, I can use yeah. that money to fund my own research. So it's okay. And so I have a few people, they will probably take about anywhere from 600 milligrams to 800 milligrams BID twice a day. And so that's that's a lot of, that's 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 a huge dose. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think taking it will, because somewhere your body's producing it, will oh, of course taking of course. it impact the production of it? And I, I, I'm not sure you can answer that question. But what I tell people to do, if they're taking something their body naturally produces, the analogy is kind of like Weight Watchers. You do a calorie reduction every day, and the next thing you know, your metabolism slows down. But if you, you know, intermittent fast, you don't have that problem. So I tell people to pulse these types of supplements. Any any thoughts on so, that? So when it comes to the glutathione, you're right. When you when you take glutathione from exogenous sources, your body will shut it down. It does not shut it down if you take liposomes or oral capsules because right. it never enters those intercellular levels. So with my product, I am I am nearly 100% sure that your body will shut down its own production of glutathione uh, because the, the, the way it's affecting. But I always say that thing. So glutathione is not a hormone. It is not a pituitary hormone, not a hypothalamic hormone, not a gonadal hormone. It is not a hormone. And so to having a ne negative feedback on a production of proteins is not always a bad thing because the body can use the energy to produce other types of proteins as well. That's so I'm not really sure yet. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. Uh, so, what, what did you say the half life would of it is, so, and and does so, that affect your dosing? So the half life, if it's if it's not intracellular, it's about fourteen minutes. If it's intracellular, it's supposed to be two to three days. And so, so it's not I, vita, it's not vitamin D, but it's not sodium either. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so anything that you that you take again. I always give uh, example of, of people taking those liposomal supplements of glutathione because what happens is that it's like, let's say you have a child and your daughter wants a dollhouse in the backyard. So what you do is you buy the dollhouse and the dollhouse comes to your house and, and, and on a truck and goes, oh my God, this thing doesn't get into my house. So what you do, you take all the drills, you break it down the whole dollhouse, go to the backyard and you build it again. I mean, that is that efficient manner to do the build a dollhouse in the backyard? No. The second thing is, you know what? That's okay. I'll just order all the parts. You know, come in the box like Ikea. I come in the box. I take the box in the backyard and just build it once. I don't, I don't break it down. I just build it once. So or better yet, what we are doing right now is you order a dollhouse. Somebody comes and just puts it in the backyard straight up for you. Done. I'm liking that. So Dr. Yeah. Dr. Patel, a couple of questions came in. Yes. In your opinion, if someone's giving you glutathione as an ingredient in a supplement, you think it's more of a marketing um, promotion than it is really an efficacious way to deliver the, the substance? So yes and no. It is it is not all marketing. There is some substance to it too as, as well. So all the research that I have done, if you take a glutathione molecule, the body will break it down. It doesn't matter if it's IVs including IVs, as well as oral capsules or oral, oral liposomal liquids. Your body will break down all those glutathione into various amino acids. Cysteine is the one that gets reuptake again and produce glutathione from there. So the research that was done in 1991 on after infusion of two grams of glutathione, what they saw was a tenfold increase in the serum or, or RBC levels of cysteine. And so even though there was zero increase of glutathione in the, in, the, in the RBCs, they saw a tenfold increase of cysteine. So yes, we did not have glutathione immediately available to the body, but the body did have cysteine, so they eventually can they make glutathione out of it. What I do not know is the half-life of cysteine inside the red blood cell. I do not know that answer yet. Yeah, well, I think you know cysteine is such an important amino acid for cross-linking proteins that it's not a bad thing to, to get it then. Um, what about improved glutathione absorption via rectal suppositories? It's the same, right? Uh, the, keep in mind, it's a large molecule. Until the molecule is completely shrunk into smaller size, it's not going to go through any pores in your body. 
So I'll lead you another, another last secret out of this whole thing. Because when I met uh, Scott Gottlieb, the FDA commissioner, uh, and discussed the glutathione with him, and of course his jaw dropped, I said, hey, what the F did you do with this molecule? Um, <laughs> and uh, and it, it's the, it's, it should be the proof of concept. So what we, have, what we have done is that everything that goes to your skin, it has to be lipid soluble, it has to be in an oil form because that's how it goes through the skin, through the lipid membrane, diffuse it out through your skin. This is the first in the world technology that is actually using the water channels of your skin to deliver medication or mm -hmm. deliver nutrient, which Very is, cool. which is at, at this point, there's not a single part in the world that does that part. So this is actually is increasing the possibility of the future as that, hey, if we can deliver small proteins like this ones to the, to the body, hey, can I have other small proteins available to the body like this method? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I don't know yet. I would love to work on that one. Uh, so we have we, a couple we need to chat because Dr. Carter and I have a little side project we haven't worked on in a while, but it has everything yeah. to do about <laughs> delivering things for the stratum corneum to the upper layer of the endothelial, the capillaries. But yeah. Um, so Steve asks if there's any provisos for taking your product. You know, everybody, everybody kind of has a proviso for cancer. Don't take anything. What, what's your thoughts on that? So, yeah, so I have been, <laughs> the cancer is such a, such a good one, right? Because I, at one point I said, nope, no for cancer because I don't know enough research about it. And then I said, I, I my neighbor who has uh, stage four cancer has used me in this park for about three years now, and she is completely free of cancer. Pet scan came normal. She goes to the city of Hope over here in California. And so she was feeling fantastic about it. And so I guess, oh, maybe there's, there's an opportunity out there as well. Uh, so lately, there's, there's one thing that I just come across to me uh, is the gluten S transferase enzyme. If people have a defect of that enzyme, they cannot, I repeat, they cannot take glutathione. Uh, it may, in fact, harm them if they have a cancer and if they have this enzyme defect. Mm. And this enzyme defect is actually is a mutation and is happening after you get cancer. You're not born with it. Interesting. So, you know, so what's interesting is Dr. Carter and I just wrote a book. Cancer is an infectious disease. We didn't say it, it is. is only an infectious disease, but it plays a big role. And I read something, an article in 2005 around thereabouts that infections, infectical genomics, infections can modulate your, your genome. And, and so this is probably the exact example of what's probably going on there. Right. And, and so my whole, my, my, my grandma, my grandpa, my great grandma, grandpa, they all died of cancers. Uh, and we were, and my uncle who's, who also, well, my, my brother, my dad has two brothers. So my other uncle also has enlarged prostate. He doesn't take glutathione uh, for some reason or not. I don't know why. And my dad, which we all thought that he was going to have prostate issues. Uh, he has nothing. He has absolutely nothing. I, somebody did his biological age. I think they were measuring his telomeres and he was, they was doing some, his biological age and they labeled him as 18 year old. And, oh. and so don't tell him that because he's already think that he's, is invincible. No, we can't uh, tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He's, he started drinking for the first time at, at the age, age of 85 because he heard about all these things now. So he's, he's run about telling everybody that, Hey, he's only 18. Uh, and, so, <laughs> and, and he's completely disease free. And that's the thing that just shocks me the most. Oh, you know what? I have one more story for you guys before I go, because this is, this thing just happened about two weeks ago. And my, my, my brother's best friend, uh, he's in Kenya. Uh, we are from Africa. I'm from Zambia myself, uh, but we have friends in Kenya. And so his, in, his friend in Kenya is uh, his alcoholic. And uh, two and a half years ago, he went for his uh, reunion for his high school re reunion. And he saw him and he saw that he looked like an 80 year old man, completely alcohol. I mean, he's just pale, right? And so my brother told me, hey, why don't you start using glutathione? Because he, it, it would at least rebuild your liver. And the guy goes, his, his other friend goes that he, his liver function is only 10% left. He's, he's dying pretty much. 
is dead, right? Two and a half years today, his daughter was getting married. He's still alive and kicking. Mm. His lunar functions is over 60%. Wow. Yeah. And so, I mean, he still looks old, by the way. He hasn't changed his looks that much. (laughs) Energy is back. His life is back. And his... The, my my brother's friend circle, all the people in the in the group was saying, "Well, all they they thought my my brother was God because it, because of you, he's still alive today. He's seeing his daughters getting married, uh, but more importantly, it, it's is for the first time we were able to get his liver back, which was down to ten percent, which was to me is yeah, yeah. there's no cure in Africa. You, you know, he's going to die because there's no liver transplant. There's nothing in Africa." Right. He, was going to, he was just going to die from there. So anyway, that was another story. That oh, was. that's outstanding. I'm going to, one more question, then we have a tradition in how we end our weekly okay. webinars. But um, Carl asks, uh, what might you speculate the effect of uh, glutathione and eye drop for cataracts? And I'll extend that to macular degeneration or glaucoma. All right. So, you know, in my past life, I, I used to make uh, glutathione eye drops. Uh, for for cataracts and glaucoma, uh, not for glaucoma, for mainly for cataracts. So I used to work for with a surgeon over here in in Southern California, and he used to make me make all the glutathione for the uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for the cataracts. Well, earlier as a cataracts, and we were making this all the time. I never saw the results of it, or never knew about it. But uh, the doctor swear by it, so he keep on prescribing it. I have yet to study my new version for that one yet. So mm-hmm. if there's an ophthalmologist in this group that wants to work with me, I'm open for that. I would be love to collaborate with you and see if we can if we can get some results out there right now. Excellent. And with that, um, I'm going to have a new approach, folks. I'll put the the questions out on the blog and try to answer them, or at least um, see what you know. Maybe the community, Joy and Steve, and and their little side community can can answer those questions as well. Um, but with that, Dr. Harshfield usually lands our plane on the on our weekly webinars. So, and then of course, Dr. Patel will be back tomorrow five five o'clock his time, eight o'clock our time, my time at least. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Perfectly. Good, <clears throat> Dr. Patel. Thank you so much for the presentation and for all the work that you're doing. It's interesting. This glutathione molecule is. Uh, not just unique to humans, it's made in funguses and play archaea, even uh, prozoans and so forth. So it's kind of an interesting molecule. And it goes along with the lecture series that we've been doing, particularly this year. Uh, sulfur was a really good source, uh, two, two lectures that we had about six months ago. And this obviously is a, is a sulfur-based uh, tripeptide. And it's also got Three, the three amino acids, the glycine, cysteine, and glutamic acid, are really interesting. The question that I had, obviously, you, you mentioned that it, uh, glut, uh, glutathione is how we generate and maintain energy. And that's kind of our group's idea is voltage is healing, that's concept. Do you Have you noticed with some of the uh, Roundup, the glyphosate compounds, they tend to be an imposter. They look like glycine. And have you noticed that with this, glyphosate uh, research that we're doing is that is there a direct effect on glutathione as far as you can tell um are you talking about the the bayer's uh roundup product roundup, yeah. yeah so it's chemically very similar right and so but it's altered and uh, the half-life is so large it's I have, we've been working with the farmers uh, in, in Northern California area that are exposed to these chemicals all the time. They have, they have unexplained diseases uh, that we are trying to work with them. And so far the results are, are good to okay. I, I cannot hang my head on it uh, at, at this point yet because I'm not sure if it's dose dependent because there is a way to detoxify gly- uh, glycosate from, from your body with the help of glutathione, with the conjugation pathways of glutathione. But I do not know how far deep into it because glycophase, uh, the, the glycosate is fat-soluble. 
and it stuck into uh, every tissues. And so gluten may not get to all the fat, so, uh, fat soluble toxins. So it takes a while to get rid of it. So we don't know how long that's going to take, but does it help conjugate it and get rid of it? The answer is uh, yes. Chemically, it does work. Getting to it is the hard part inside your body. Okay. Well, one, one thing, there's, there's a product that, um, that I've used very successfully with people. It's fulvic and humic based. Uh-huh. Um, it's from a company called Cellcore. And, and I've seen um, the glyphosate levels come down quite remarkably. Now, that does take a while. It, it did take about a year to get it all the way down to, let's say, acceptable levels. But um, their their product is quite astounding in in terms of how effective it is. So um, that in combination with your product could be very good for these farmers. Because yeah, you're right. <clears throat> it's it's um, very very sad what's what's happening out there with um, the, these farmers being exposed to these chemicals. And of course, glyphosate is just one of many. Oh gosh, yes. Know. Oh my goodness, there, there's so many of them, and they and they have no voice. They have no voice to right. raise the concerns for them. So it is sad. But what Absolutely. you say, the levels comes out in the blood levels, but the bigger issue is in the, is in the fat cells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you bring those down? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, I'll everyone definitely it. needs to go um, read Dr. Patel's book. I, I've read it. It's an awesome book. Right. It, it is a nice, easy, enjoyable read, <laughs> you know, not too, too crazy technical. So you did an excellent job on the book. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel. We'll see you tomorrow evening as well. Okay. Appreciate oh, yes. It. Thank you. Thank you very much.